Okay, I just skipped ahead a bit and to paint this thing. What I did, I, I uh, primed it with the outdoor primer to begin with. I'm using whatever I have lying around. That's what I had. You could use any kind of primer or just white paint if you wanted to. And now uh, this is going to be a white snow bunny. And you want to make layers. So to get white, if you want to paint white, have layers. Um, you got to start with uh, the shadows, so you're going to start with darker. So I'm going to start with uh, mid-tone gray, and I'm going to paint the whole thing gray. And you can use any paint. What I did, I had some house paint, I had some white, and I had some black. I mixed it together, and I got this gray here. And house paint's pretty cheap because you don't use much when you're doing this. And like you could just, if you just want to paint the bunny just white, and it'll look okay, but it's not going to look as good when you when you layer it and have depth with it, with the shadows and everything. And you want to use a fairly bigger brush. I'm painting this for my sister for a Christmas gift. It's actually her bunny. And I just took it from her to paint. So I'm just going to finish this, put a coat on that, let it dry, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, I just uh, finished the first uh, base coat. And you can see, you can still see some white there underneath. It's really important for the base coat that you want to make sure it's completely covered. So I'm going to do another coat. And my wife gave me the idea to make this device here. Lazy Susan, I think it's called. And uh, so I just quickly drilled a hole halfway through each board, put a dowel in there and make it easier to paint instead of going around it I could just stay seated perfect good idea okay I got the second coat of gray on everything's pretty much covered really, really well and now um, the next step is we're gonna make a it's called a wash and what it is is like it's a very watered down black paint but ink would be better to use if you can if you have black ink but very watered down and that drips into the crevices here and dries there and creates a dark shadow which would be hard to paint with a brush you could do that but it would require more time but um, so I'm going to show you how to make that wash right now. So I'm just going to start off with a little bit of black paint. You only need a little bit and that's probably way too much. And then I'm just going to put water in there to dilute it. And just put a little bit in there, mix it up. Get it all mixed really well. And if, it, if it's too thick, add more water. And if it's too thin, you could always add more paint. So test it with your brush. You want it to be um, 
translucent and uh but still have like some dark on there so that's that's about that's about right how you'd want it okay now that i got my wash mixed up i'm just going to take my same brush and just go over it Don't worry that it's making the whole thing darker. And this is probably a little bit thicker wash than I would like. But right there I could stop and then just water it down. But no, for what I'm going for, this is going to be okay. But what, the important thing is, uh, as you can see, all the cracks there is all covered by the black watery paint. And uh, that's what you're looking for. That's going to dry up in there nice and good. So you want to let this dry for a bit. No, that's actually good. The painting really nice is uh, it takes practice, but there's just little tricks that you just need to learn. Like this washing trick. It really makes a difference. Just don't let any drips dry. Just make sure you rub everything in. I'm going to finish this up. And let it dry for a bit. And then I'll show you the next step. Uh, just to show you like how I'm painting and like uh, keeping everything clean and everything is I got a paper towel I got uh, a little container of water with a little bit of dish soap that's the rinse the brush you want to keep that rinse you want to let the paint dry paint dry on the brush and I just use the paper towel to dry it I got my container of white container of black and my mixture of gray and my wash and no it's good to use those uh, margin containers uh, then you can seal it up and especially if you add a little bit of water to it it will uh, stay wet for a long period of time and even if it dries in the margin container you could just it'll just come out nice and easy and you could reuse it for painting so if you're gonna get into painting uh, on a regular basis anyways Especially painting large things like that with a lot of paint, these margin containers are really handy. But you could just use a uh, dollar star paint, which is remember um, uh, thicker coats. It's not as good as thinner coats. It's better to do many layers of thinner coats than multiple or fewer layers with uh, thicker coats, because the thicker coats will uh, dilute the texture of the model. It'll fill in the cracks basically easier. Okay, I did uh, two coats of the wash. You can see it gets in the cracks nice. And now the next step we're going to do is we're going to take that gray we had left over. You don't want to throw that out. It uh, we're going to be using this throughout the the process. We're going to gradually make this whiter and whiter. But for now, we'll just use the same gray. And we're going to use a technique called uh, dry brushing. So what we do is uh, we just dip the paint in. Let it soak in the brushes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to Get a paper towel. You're gonna need lots of paper towels for this. And you're gonna brush off the excess. Okay. 
And now we'll go back up to the bunny. And we're just going to lightly go over that. All the fine details, the eyes and that, I'm going to be doing after I'm done this game. We're just working on this, the fur right now. And when you start to run out, just dip it again. I can still use what's left on the tissue paper already, or the paper towel. Better to go lighter and then fill it in like that, just like you want a light coat of paint, prefer than a thick coat of paint. But the less patience patience you have, the thicker I guess you could do it. But it'll look better if you go lighter and gradually increase the color. You can see how the the edges starting to pop out. And the dark is staying in the cracks there. I want to try not to get streaks like that on there. That just means you have too much paint on there. just going to continue the bunny with this coat here. And uh, the bristle of brush, you want to use like a, a fairly hard bristle. You don't want no soft bristles when you're dry brushing. This brush that I got right now is kind of like good for uh, base coating and dry brushing at the same time. Okay, that's uh, how it looks after first dry brush coat. And the lighting's pretty bad in here. I need to get a, like a lighting system going on. Or I could always get nice even light. But, uh, Hope you can get the color of that. Okay, so in the next step, I'm gonna add some more white to that gray I already have to make it a little bit lighter. And then I'm gonna mix it up and try brush that on. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a, a little paint spoon here, take some of the white. Put in the gray. I'm just gonna mix that in. bit lighter gray now. Now I'm going to dry brush that on now. And when this is all said and done, it's going to be mostly white. We're just doing this so that there's a gradual transition 
from light to dark that it just it'll make the thing look good but you won't really be able to tell Say, wow, how's that so good looking? I'm just going to finish this coat. And I can see it with the second coat done. It's getting there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more white. Probably a lot more white to that. And then give it another dry brush. Okay, I got a little bit better lighting in here. To show it better on the film. Okay, that's with uh, two layers of dry brush on there. It looks good already, and you could settle for that if you want, but the more you do, the better it'll look. So I'm going to add some more, a little bit more white to that mixture I had and give it another dry brush. The lighter you go, you want to make sure more paint is off the brush. Or you get smudges like that. If that happens, just wet your finger and brush it off. I was gonna go buy a few more uh, stone gnomes like this. If you want to get the stones, the plastic, the paint doesn't hold too good on the plastic. And but it's winter time now. I was gonna do it for Christmas. It's much more efficient if you paint a bunch at the same time and less waste on the paint too. But I couldn't buy them anywhere. It's off season, right? So I'll have to think about that next time. Just continue that and finish the coat. Yeah, okay, just finished uh, that other coat. Let's see if I get in closer here. You see the texture? You know, is it texture by doing it like this? Instead of just painting it straight white, this is actually. Um, white-tailed jackrabbit. I was saying a snowshoe hare, but hares have smaller ears, so it's definitely a rabbit. And I'm painting it white, so it's a, the only rabbit I could find in North America. It's a white-tailed jackrabbit that goes white in the winter. Brown in the summer. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm done with the 
the grays. Now I'm going to do pure white and give it a light dry brush with pure white. For the next step. Okay, now I'm going to do pure white. It's not the last step, by the way. Because even with pure white, it's still going to blend in. Unless you go over it a few coats with uh, white, white, white. It's still going to be pretty dark. So I would probably do two coats dry brush of pure white. At the end, I'm going to use a, a brush and paint really pure white, watered down pure white on, on the tops, on the, on the tops of the crevices, on the highlight, the higher parts. <clears throat> Okay, I finished my last coat of white dry brush. See, it really brings out the texture. But I'm not done yet. What I'm going to do now is, uh, you could stop there and it's going to look good. You could go on to the next step, which is just the, the, the details, like the eyes, the ear, inside the ears and stuff, and the base. <clears throat> But I'm going to take a normal brush and pure white paint. I'm going to dilute the white paint so it's not that clumpy and thick. It's going to be a little watery. And I'm going to smear it on the edges. On the, the corners and everything like that. And on the tops here. And that's going to make it look a little less chalky and bring it out even more. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually paint on the bunny now with a smaller brush. What I'm using is a it's called a base coat brush. It's a high quality brush, so it's like six seven bucks for this brush, and it'll last a long time as long as you take care of it. Don't let the paint dry on it. After so long, rinse it in water with a little soap in it. Dry it off. Don't let the paint with the paint dries on, then the brush is gonna be gone pretty quick but then you can use it as a dry brush so they actually are worth the money to invest don't get the dollar store brushes you can't paint with them they just don't spread paint nice and evenly and it just slops it on and it's hard to control so this is a sable hair or uh, sable hair brush so that's what I'm going to use but when we're doing this I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't want to use much time on it. So I'm gonna try and do it as quick as possible. And anyways, you want to use a watered down when you're doing highlights and stuff. 
You want to use watered down, but not too watery that it's going to drip in the cracks. It just wants an, a nice flowing texture. So I'm going to add some, a little bit of water at a time to this white paint until I can see the texture that I want. Mix that really good. Probably added a little too much for the first test. Let's see how watery this is. That's probably good actually. So you want it like, like that's good. Get the, the paint mat. Just want to test it on the wall here. It's good. So after you dip the paint, you might want to brush off a little, a little bit of the extra, and then go nuts on the model. And I'll show you that now. Okay, I added more water. Dipping the brush in, and I'm touching it against the side of the wall to get a lot of the flowy liquid off the brush. And I could have used a smaller brush if I wanted to be uh, I'm creating like a masterpiece or whatever. A smaller brush, the better. But I just want to get this done and still look good. You can see how adding that white, the dry brush puts a chalky thing on there. It, it looks good, but it just doesn't feel complete. You add a little bit of watered down paint on the top of that chalk on just on the edges and it really brings it out. If, it, if the paint wasn't watery you would have big gobs of paint and it wouldn't flow as easy. So in a sense I'm like actually dry brushing with wet paint. So I'm just trying to get the edges. You know this this step is going to take a lot longer but it's still not going to take that long. You know you could probably finish it the, the coat in a half hour or so. See, like the tops of the the edges there. The eyes I'm not going to worry about because they're going to be painted a totally different color. edge of this ear. So I, when I first dip it in, it's a little bit wet. 
and that's when you go in like the peaks and as it gets drier it's more like sort of ending off in dry brushing and then you can go into places that you don't want it pure white Try to blend it all in, instead of looking like like strokes. You want it to kind of blend it in. And just the top of the the highlighted parts at the very peaks should be pure white in the end see the white is all done now you can just leave it like that if, if you're happy with that but now uh, you want to make it look really good we're going to go to the fine details and we're going to start, I'm going to start anyways, it doesn't matter what area you use. Basically for fine details we got the eyes and the ears and we got the base to do too. So I'm going to do it, start with the ears and they're going to be like a reddish pinkish color. And you're going to use the same principle as with the white. You're going to start with a darker red and build it up lighter with dry brushing. Okay, here's my paints and palette board. Um, starting to run out of paint. These are old. So what I'm using here is I got deep red. And I'm just going to pour some in here. And I'm going to throw a base coat on the ears. Inside the where it's going to be red and pink. I want to be careful with this. I don't want to go over the edge and stuff. So I'm going to do that now. Start in the center and just go closer to the edges. By doing this step, I'm probably going to get, you know, especially when I start dry brushing, I'm going to probably get some uh, reddish on the white edges there. But that's okay because after you're done, just take a white, small white paintbrush and just paint over the red with the white. Correct your mistake there. I started learning how to paint by painting small miniature models and the same principles apply to the macro scale models. Say it again, don't worry if you screw up and go over the edges. <clears throat> you could always touch it up with white after. But the key is try to 
try to not do it as much mistakes to begin with and it's less to correct in the end less work but you could always repair your mistakes okay I'm just gonna go finish up the base coats on the two ears here I'll be right back. Finish the base coat of the ears. Went off the lines in two spots there and touched the white. So I'm going to let that dry thoroughly. And I'm going to do the next step is I'm going to do the black wash on it with the black wash I want to make sure it's not too drippy well it's still got to be watered down but you don't want to have too much on the brush you don't want it to drip all over the place <clears throat> so let that dry and then do the black wash okay the, the paint's dry now I'm just gonna take that black wash I already made I'm gonna wipe most of it off and I laid the model down so it doesn't drip down. And I'm just going to go over all the red there with it. And I might have to do two coats. That's just going to darken it. And this darkness is pretty much going to end up in the bottom of the ear and the sides of the ear will be lighter <clears throat> I'm just going to go on all those little crevices and everything and darken them give it texture and that's what painting like this does it gives texture to the object I love this lazy season. Simple to make. one coat let that dry okay now that the black wash is dried I'm gonna take a smaller dry brush there harder bristle brush and I'm gonna use the same red I used to paint this on like I did before dip it in the paint let it soak in and then wipe it off on a paper towel and I'm just gonna dry brush in here now, of course, I'm going to get some white on the edges, or some red, but I'm going to touch that up afterwards. And this is going to brighten, brighten it up a bit while still leaving dark crevices in there with the, the wash went in the crevices. And I'm going to try to brush all that. Just like that. Turn this around, repeat on the other side.
that's good enough. Now I'm going to add uh, some more white. Trying to get the edges now, so it blends in, and then I'm gonna put some white up over that. See the the ears starting to come alive now. Now you might find all those little other layers that I did, those many other layers. Why bother doing that? But they actually do add to the effect gradually it makes a blending effect <clears throat> okay now I'm gonna add pure white and that bin there in this layer Dip it in the brush, try to brush that off, and add another coat. And this I want to put on very light. If you can see that well, but it really brings it out a lot. Any red marks I see, I'm just gonna dry brush over it with white. I'm gonna do that first if some of the red still shows through. I'll just go over it with a small brush on white paint. And this is sort of like blending the hair back into the ear at the same time by going on the edges here. Okay, I finished the uh, rabbit ears. Okay, next step. Is the eyes. Okay, now we're going to do the eyes. And we're just going to get pure black and carefully paint inside the eye. You 
to start near the edge or the center and kind of push the paint towards the edge. Get a nice even line. Yeah, see that? When you're filming, you gotta go on weird angles here. So that's how you start the eye. You want that to dry thoroughly. I'm going to give a, a rabbit blue eyes. So now we want to put a circle blue in the black. Now if you look at nature, the, the blue pretty much covers the black. There's black on the outsides, but it's it's art, so whatever kind of feel you have. So I'm just gonna start small and work my way out till I like it. Get this light on the other side here. My hand's blocking it. What do you got there? Reflection. I think that might be good enough. Now that the blue is dried, I'm just going to grab my black wash again and go over that. Probably do two coats of uh, wash. Now I'm just gonna, now I'm just gonna take that original blue I had and just lightly dry brush it. I originally had the, this blue here. I had a little bit in there, and I could add white to it and just slowly work up like I did with the, the ears and everything, the white. But I got a lighter blue, a highlight blue. I'm just going to add a little bit of that to that original blue, one drop, because I'm not using much. And I'm going to mix that together. Look at that color. <clears throat> now I'm just going to lightly dry brush that on. See the eye pop out now? After I do the last highlight, I'm going to 
put a black retina there and I want to highlight this light blue the, the highlight blue just pure highlight blue and just go around from the eye to me that there's kind of like white lighter marks I forget what that part of the eye is called the outer the iris or the iris is and that's the retina I'm not sure I can't remember but in this the, the middle layer it has like highlights of some white in there it's a lot lighter in color so what I'm using is a it's a dry brush that got worn out and there's just a little tip on there so never throw out your brushes especially good quality ones because you can always resort use them as dry brushes or some kind of tool in painting so I'm going to lightly brush this highlight going out from the center of the eye that I'm going to paint after sort of like lines Now I'm going to use black and paint the center of the eye. So most of the time, uh, the pictures I've seen, uh, it's circular or it's oval pointing up. A lot of times it's circle, like this could grow depending on the, the darkness. So just use whatever you feel, whatever the model calls for. But start off with a small black circle. I'm going to go oval first. Start out small. And then if you want it bigger, just gradually grow it bigger. I think I want it small. Less glare there. So basically that's all you do. And then there's just one more step for the eye. Just to add a little tiny white dot with a fine brush in the center with that block there and that totally it makes them uh, it's like it's supposed to res resemble a reflection of light but it actually kind of makes the eye point in your direction now I have a real fine detail brush this is a 10 and if you don't have this detail brush, maybe use a toothpick. Or, but the main something that you can be accurate with. You just want to put a tiny white dot on the black, just like that. It's so small, like you won't even know. No, nobody will notice it, but it adds to the effect that you see. Here's the other eye. See how they're just that little dot really brings the eye out and makes it complete. I 
Now we got the base to work on. That's all we got left. Now, I've done another one of these before and put a duck, or actually a goose, and I made the top here. I painted it green for grass and the sides and as brown for like dirt. Now, I have other options this time. I got the static grass, which is like a synthetic grass that you glue on and sprinkle it on, makes it look like grass. So I could paint the whole thing like dirt and put this static grass on there. But this thing's got to be able to stand outside, so at the end of it, I'm going to spray it with a, a gloss clear spray, a few coats of that, so that will protect it protect the paint from the elements and make it last longer so I could probably spray over that grass do that another technique I could do is um, glue sand on there and paint the sand and make it look rocket like he's on rocks so uh, I'm gonna think about that but I think uh, so I still have the option to go back to the painted grass on the top I'm just gonna paint the whole thing brown for now and then from there decide if I want to have painted on grass or just static grass or just dirt. So I'll just paint the whole base brown. And we're going to do the same principles as what we did before. You paint the dark brown, uh, put a little black wash, put the dry brush, the gradual lightens of brown all the way up to uh, the lightest brown. Okay, now I'm going to paint the base, and what I did, I had some uh, dark brown, as dark as I got, anyways, from my old model days. I'm just going to mix a little water in there, because it's kind of thick anyways, and it'll help the paint spread easier, and you'll use less paint. So, start away from the edges, and just kind of try to push the paint in, in the edges. And then brush out. And we're going to do that for the whole base. And then uh, do a second coat after that dries. Okay, now that I got the base coat painted, I'm going to go with my black wash again. And just uh, spread it all over. Now I'm going to take uh, the original brown I had and dry brush over that. Same like before.
this is like a basic quick way of getting nice results and it's the same thing for every color put the base color in wash it and dry brush it with lighter and lighter colors you do that with every color now I just add a little bit of light very light brown to the mixture mixed it up and I'm going to go over that I'm going to add, my, add a little bit of white to the mixture and go lightly on this coat, a little bit of white. There we have for now a bunny that's almost done, or a rabbit. The eyes there, and then the base, which is not done yet, but we got the brown done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some static grass to that, and that should complete it. And then we're just going to spray glass over that. Now that we got we got the bunny done, I'm going to I decided to put static grass on there. All it is is sort of like green fibers. And how you put that on is just with the normal white glue. But I don't have any white glue, I just got this carpenter's glue. It's yellow. I'm not sure if it would dry with a yellow tinge or not. 
probably better off to use the white. But I should have it all covered anyways. So I'll just add some glue. We don't need much because we're not doing that much. And then I add a little bit of water. And I take a cheap uh, dollar store brush and mix it in with that water. We're looking for like a watery glue. So, like, so you could spread it easier. And there's no clumps. A little bit too thin. Add more glue. I'm just going to take our brush with glue and we're going to put glue wherever we want the grass to be. So I probably want some in here. Instead of doing the whole thing all grass, I'm just going to do patches. Now we take our static grass, grab like a pinch of it, and you want to like break it apart over the glue. You don't want to throw the clumps on it, just break it apart over the glue. And you're doing this on a sheet of newspaper because you're going to collect all the access later and save it for next time. You're spreading it all over because it's only going to stick to the parts with the glue on it. Then you wait for it to dry. And... Uh, then you brush it off. Now I can't get in that area there, so I'm gonna tip it upside down here. And do it that way. That's it. Go around the model and then let it dry for a few hours and then we'll go to the next step. Now I'm gonna glue's dried now. Now I'm just going to brush all this stuff out with a dry brush here. You can see a lot's coming out. And that's how it looks afterwards. Now 
I just save all this save all this extra static grass here. pour it back in the container. Okay, there's the finished bunny. And uh, now I'm just going to spray it with uh, clear glass spray paint. Now if it's going to stay outside, do at least three coats. Or if it's going to stay inside, just two is good enough. Doing this is going to kind of squash a lot of the texture there but uh, you need to protect that paint because if it's a heavy object it would be easy for it to fall over and scratch some of the paint off so you should put a glass coat on there